All right, we are back uh, on Inappropriate Earl. We took a week off just to uh, for Sweeps uh, Week, and uh, I can't think of a better guest to start off Sweeps Week in the podcast world than uh, my next door neighbor. Uh, <laughs> not gay Tim, but uh, I was at the gym once, and uh, I saw my neighbor on TV. I didn't really know a lot about her. And she's one of the most preeminent soap actresses in the world. So it is <laughs> humbling and honoring to have Melissa Archer on Inappropriate Earl. Hello and thank you. Well, you were by far and away the easiest guest to get on because you literally had to walk 30 feet to your right. Yeah, the traffic was a little tough, but well, I was able to get through. I mean, this is uh, <laughs> it's tough to get people to come here to do this. <laughs> So I'm glad that I have a celebrity in the building. It works out. It's nice and easy. Now, I grew up a nighttime soap person, like Dallas, uh -huh. Falcon Crest, uh, Knott's Landing, <laughs> uh, stuff of that nature. And it's weird because you always reminded me of Victoria Principal. Really? Oh, thank you. And I see you're from Dallas. I am from Dallas. W what? brought you to LA originally well <laughs> no I came to LA because um I wanted to pursue my acting career and uh so I I graduated a year early I convinced my parents to um let me do that and uh, moved out here and the agreement was I had to go to school so I did and then I dropped out the last year and I booked a show and moved to New York what show did you book one life to live and that's a huge so, I mean, that's like the big one. Yeah. Well, it's least, gone now, but. <laughs> it might be, but you guys tried to uh, do an online. Uh, yeah. Yep. And it did, uh, why didn't that, I would think that would work an online. You know, I think there was a lot to it. it, it I think um, because they were doing a different, completely different platform. Um, and, and this is me speaking out of, I have no papers to look at to see how anything worked. But I'm saying as far as my thoughts on it, um, doing a show like ours that that's every day um and then putting it on an online platform where people binge watch i think maybe was what made it a little more difficult to kind of get off rolling right now do you find with the uh rise of netflix hulu amazon that it hurts traditional like programming like soap operas um i think that if you aren't willing to change and you're not willing to go with what's there now, then you're going to get hurt. But I don't think in general that it's a bad thing. I actually think that all the online platforms are pretty amazing. Um, I think that a lot of people nowadays, especially in the younger generations, prefer to watch that don't even want cable anymore. I mean, I would go nuts without direct TV. <laughs> And I mean, I've got the full system here. Netflix, uh, the 8,000 channels. Uh, I couldn't survive without cable. I don't know how people do it. I think I could, I can survive without it. Well, but you're in the business. I, I'm assuming the last thing someone who works on TV, when they get home, they don't want to watch it. But see, that's actually the contrary. I love watching TV. I just um, like watching it the way I want to watch it, which I think is why I like the online platform so much more because it's just basically all on demand. Right. So it's just, it's easy for me. I think the only thing that... Um, I guess as challenging as like the live stuff, if you want to watch a game or, or something like that, um, there's probably a way, but I haven't done enough research to do online watching of games. Well, I just got through binge watching uh, all seven seasons of uh, Sons of Anarchy. Oh my God, is it not so good? I really, uh, I hope, I mean, I guess they, they're doing a spinoff series. Oh, they are? On the, I love how I know nothing. Well, I don't know how this is going to work, but they're going to do it on the Mexican gang, the Mayans. Mm -hmm. And the, the lead Mayan, he's a great actor. So, yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I wish they wouldn't kill Charlie. I know. I know. He, He's not kind of in love with him. Well, he, as a soap actress, how would you rate his acting ability? Did you find him believable as the leader of a Hell's... I thought he was too good looking to be a Hell's Angels <laughs> type leader. Okay, so like in the very beginning when he, he looked like he was, you know, 16. Right. Not so much. Um, but as the seasons 
like as the seasons progressed and I binge watched too. So it was like, I felt like it all happened overnight, but um, he started to look buffer and a little more rugged. And then when, when that happened, then I was like, Oh yeah, I believe it. I don't really care if he's too good looking. Cause then it was just fun to watch him. I love the casting on that show. Yeah. They are oh, fantastic. And the cameos and uh, yeah. you know, Kurt Sutter is just, I know, I, you know, I'm not so sure about his new show. Uh, the bastard executioner. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. It's a little uh, like medieval times okay. type of, uh, but hey, who He's am I? He's very dark. Oh, I love it. The <laughs> Shield was, uh, did you ever watch The Shield? Um, I don't think I watched, maybe, I maybe watched one episode of it, but I don't think I watched the whole, whole thing. Now let's get back to you. Enough about Kurt Sutter and his <laughs> 75 shows he's got in production. Right. Uh, do you audition, I assume, for non-soap? Yes, uh, yes. And is it hard when you walk in the room? I mean, everyone must know you. Do you get uh, kind of typecast as, oh, that's the, the bitch from... <laughs> the, no, no. I mean, you play a great bad... Uh, like yeah. A, a uh, evil. No, I don't think that uh, so much of, the, of that, but for sure being just the fact that I've been on a soap, I think I get kind of typecast in that world sometimes um, where people think, ah, oh, she's a soap actress. Right. And they say that kind of negatively, which is really funny because we work pretty damn hard. Oh my God. Every day. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. you know, so like, and we memorize lines faster than anybody in our business. So did, I'm just saying, did you, well, you uh, were very believable. Like Thanks. you, you were, uh, it was hard to watch you cause you're so nice in person. <laughs> That uh, it's hard to believe that you could be kind of a, a bitchy character. Is that how do you psych yourself up to be the complete opposite of your real personality? Oh, that's actually super fun. That's that's uh, the best part because you can take all the things that you wish you could do sometimes. Right. And you get to put it in this character, so it's nice. Um, and you know, you had quite a few uh, scenes with good-looking dudes, yeah, and whatnot. Now you're married in real life, yeah. Uh, I know if I were your husband, I'd be not jealous, but uh, I'd be like, is it hard to be married and do like a romantic scene, or is it just? Um, no, I mean, I think it's you know when you've got cameras around and like a bunch of crew people, it's not. I mean, there's not really anything that romantic about it. You just have to fake all of that, you know? Right. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. It's just a technical, it's a very right. technical thing. I mean, does your husband watch the show? No. I mean, I'm su- oh, really? No. Uh-uh. I, I, w- I would do the same. I would like, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. I am not going to watch this. It's too <laughs> hard. Um, what's, what are your favorite kind of roles to audition for? Do you like, I love comedy. Um, it's one of my favorites. Uh, I mean, I pretty much love everything. Right. I'm not that picky, but but I do really love comedy. Um, and I think sometimes, too, I like it because it's hard and it's not at the same time. I mean, probably not for you. Oh, it's real. <laughs> I think it's like, I don't know, I'm just talking to like a huge comedian here. No, um, but I think because I've been doing drama for so long, it's nice to do something where, um, you know, you have to be good at your timing and you can make people laugh. And then I love that. The only challenge is, is, I mean, I don't, I guess I don't really face that now, but right. what I used to face was like not wanting to laugh myself, <laughs> but I don't do that. <laughs> It'll be a little unprofessional. <laughs> Did you ever laugh on the soaps? Like when you have to do a very serious scene and you just look into the other actor's eyes and say, like, what are we doing? I'm not like, I, I know it's very well written shows, uh, uh, you know, but uh, Soaps, especially daytime soaps, I found some of the scenes to be, uh, this is crazy. It's very melodramatic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I used to, the way I would get through all of that um, is during rehearsals, I would I would play the, the scenes completely opposite of the way they're supposed to. So I'd play them comedic. Um, and sometimes <laughs> I sounded like Catherine Hepburn. And sometimes I sound like I was hitting on my sister and <laughs> just <laughs> whatever, whatever I saw in the scene. If you just looked at it just a little differently, I play it that way. Now, what was it like auditioning for One Life to Live? I mean, that was your first big break. Uh, yeah. Um, several rounds, I'm assuming, of uh, auditions. It's funny because I'm like, wow, so it was so long ago. Um, but uh, I think it was back in 
2000, I had auditioned for a different role on the show and didn't get it. And then I got called back in several months later, um, in 01 for, um, I think the character's name was Anne or Annie or whatever. And she was a very sweet and Jennifer Rappaport. That's the one I originally went out for. Mm, That's the one I went out for in 2000, but I didn't get it. And my friend got it. Natalie and Valerie, those names ring a bell. Well, Natalie ended up being the character. Valerie was the character that they told Mm. me it was going to be right before it ended up being Natalie. And before that, it was like some Anne something. Right. Completely different character, though. Like a completely nice, sweet, innocent girl. And then I got, um, I did the audition. And then um, when I got the, the screen test, they sent me new sides new character name. Now her name was Valerie and she was a bitch. And I was like, Oh, all right. So I'm learning them on the plane on my way to New York. And then, um, and then right after I got the role, it became Natalie. So, and I think they had a, I think they had a couple of different ideas what they were doing at the initially with that character. I think they were tossing it around if they wanted to do what they ended up doing, which was making me a Buchanan or if they wanted me to be Ben and this other woman, I can't think of her name. She was in the mob, uh, their kid. <laughs> Now, how much creative license when you join a show like One Life to Live, do they ask you for, you know, your thoughts on the character or they just say, hey, no, <laughs> no they, they, um, no, the writers, I think they, they come up with their own, um, view of, of what they want on the new character. Sometimes it might be network might have some influence in that maybe in the executive producer, but, um, most of the time it's just the head writers or head writer, depending on how many. And, um, and then they, they basically just write it and then you figure it out what, uh, what they're doing. Sometimes they'll let you in on it, right? you know, like, Oh, this is what's happening with your character. But that's the other thing about soaps is a lot of times you can go, um, many, many years. I feel kind of developing this character and this and this is kind of the way this character is and then you can get another head writer to come in and they could totally or it could be the same one they just want to change something but they'll just completely change what the character is for you know a storyline or whatever so it's it's always that's always a little fascinating was there a lot of turnover with the writers uh um at one life i feel like i want to say i probably went through about four head writers um I think, but then that last, the last one, Ron Colorvati, he, um, he stayed, I think the longest throughout my, right. I just can't remember how many years exactly it was. Did you have a favorite male, uh, lead you got to, uh, act with her? I mean, I always loved any, any of the guys that I worked with. I was really fortunate cause I got to work with some awesome, awesome men and women. Um, but, uh, Michael Easton played John and our characters were pretty much, uh, star-crossed lovers for many many years right. so i mean that was always um it was always fun to play with him but of course all of them were great <laughs> now on the depressing side of things okay. what's it like when you get the call the show's been canceled oh well that was such a very surreal day um <clears throat> you're on the show for so long it just yeah i think it was weird because of the way it all happened because we knew one of the shows was getting canceled. It was ours or all my, all my children. And, um, they call us into this room that they put together that day. So all of us had a seat and it's basically, um, a, uh, live, um, what is that called? Why can't I think of the words? Um, we're seeing our boss like on right. TV, <laughs> basically right. telling us all of us that all my children and us, Oh, by the way, we're canceling both shows. And so I think everybody was really freaking thrown because right. we didn't expect both. And then um, I was kind of like, all right, I mean, you know, I've been here a long time. That's fine. But then like I walked out of the room and I'm watching all these faces of people who were just like, holy shit. Sorry, I'm allowed to. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's just inappropriate, Earl. <laughs> OK, good. <laughs> Please swear. I mean, uh, I don't want to get you in trouble with any corporate. Uh, oh, whatever. And uh, <laughs> so uh, you just see how devastated people were and um, just this. There was just so much fear and sadness and whatever. And then it just like overwhelmed me because then I got really, really sad. And I wasn't even sad for myself. I just like started crying because I'm looking at all these sad faces. And I couldn't take it. And um, that was probably the what was hardest about it. 
Now, did a lot of people then try and jump on other shows? I mean, I imagine uh, soaps are kind of hard to get onto. Like, you know, like you guys were out of work all of a sudden. Did you guys go, oh, I want to try and get on Days of Our Lives? Or- um, I don't, I mean, I don't know for sure, like what people, what other people specifically did, but, um, I know for me it was more about, okay, well I've been doing this a long time. It's time to move on. So, uh, packed up, moved back to LA and, um, essentially try to, you know, do whatever, right. whatever came. Um, so I did a couple of films and, um, uh, web series. And then the thing with days came about, they had called and said they had this thing they wanted to do with me. So I was like, Oh, all right. And are you still on that or like recurring uh, role? No, um, my character was killed and I think it just aired like a few weeks ago. Although I, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this, but, oh. I'm, go- but I'm going to. Um. I love it. Controversy. <laughs> Controversy sells here. I believe it's the 28th, although don't quote me. Um, you'll get to see one little more snidbit. Oh, so it could be like that. Uh, speaking of Dallas, uh, that whole dream season where uh, P- Patrick Duffy was killed, right? Right. And then uh, he came back in the shower. <laughs> well, I have a feeling it won't be um, that cool, but uh, yeah. But I'm excited because um, it's my my first death scene. So like when they aired my death, like you just saw me dead. So now you actually get to see me dying. Oh, wow. I'm probably really not supposed to say all of it. But I said this on another show. I just thought it was going to like air already. So, so. Oh, this will be out tomorrow. Perfect. So uh, I don't, you know, I know soap fans. I mean, that's the great thing about soaps is they have such a loyal following. That, yeah, they're awesome. And I have a really awesome group of fans. Especially the two shows you've been on are so iconic. Yeah. Uh, like, do you still travel to, uh, I guess, conv- not conventions? Uh, so, like soap events and yeah. stuff? Yeah. 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 They're the. Every once in a while, there's one of my favorites that's out in Florida and Marco Island um, called Soap Fest. And it's run by this woman who's freaking phenomenal. It's for children. Um, and it's actually not even now just for children. It's it's for special needs in general. And um, I don't know. We we have so much fun there. <laughs> it's the I best. I can imagine. Yeah, it's, it's the all, best. It's all uh, soap uh, actors from different shows and whatnot. Yeah, and it's cool because it's like one of those times where you finally, you know, sometimes you haven't met all of these people from other shows. Right. Uh, so it's just a chance to get to know um, a, whole gr- a whole new group of people. But then there's also the ones that you never get to see except for the soap events. So you're like, oh, my God, hey, and. I don't know. It's great. We get to, and the fans are always so fun at those types of events. So like our mutual friend, Sean. Yes. Yes, exactly. What show is he on? He's on Young and the Restless. Very Actually, good looking that's guy. that's where I met him was Marco Island. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Now, is there any chance you could be on Young and the Restless? You never know. <laughs> like, do you have a soap specific agent like that? Or is your, your mm-hmm. agent sends you on movies, TV commercials? Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, what's, now, I know you have something on YouTube uh, oh, right yes. now. <clears throat> so um, myself and Jessica Morris, who also she's the one who actually played Jen Rappaport, uh, and Sonia Blanjardo, who is a director and a producer. Um, she was a producer at One Life and directed in several things. And um, Brandon Goins and Teresa Scala, we all produced a show called Viral. And um, what we did is like basically a three part pilot um, that... I think is hilarious. And so, um, anyway, we're, we're using it to pitch, but it's out there on YouTube now. Um, or at viral, the series.com. Now, what was the thing I saw online the other day? Very funny. You were in a bikini. <laughs> yes. Uh, Baywatch. Uh, Baywatch you were, unplugged. <laughs> uh, you're the other lady in the that video was, Jessica. was doing like yoga splits or something. <laughs> and you were, uh, jumping up in slow-mo. I'm, I'm telling you, if you are a straight man, <laughs> And I mean this respectfully. Uh, you owe it to yourself to watch this video. Uh, Go to. Hold on. I'll look it up while you're talking. No, please. It's uh, <laughs> very. Uh, it's an eye grabber. That's. I'll just say that. But, but that's the whole thing of YouTube. You. I mean, there's millions of videos. You have to. Uh, if you search Baywatch Unplugged, you'll find it. Um, yeah, it's. Um, so every once in a while, I like to do really silly shit and then video it and see what happens like if I can make something if I can edit it coolly or not and um 
I usually end up having, they're all so messed up when I'm doing them that I never do anything with it. Well, this one, we were, I was like, we're at the beach and I'm like, babe, we got to do something really funny. <laughs> we just started coming up with random stupid ideas <laughs> to film. And then we wanted to do it in slow-mo. <laughs> so, so we did it like a million times. And then a few times I put the phone down and tried to film it where we could both be doing something. But unfortunately I filmed the sky a lot and I think I actually had it flipped around one point and just filled my bag. So, uh, anyway, whatever I put the footage together and then use some stock music. And well, there were a life. couple shots now that I think about it, that were just kind of random, uh, <laughs> like, Oh, that's, I guess it was nice out. <laughs> right. Like, all right. We're going for a, uh, I don't know, uh, <laughs> Nouveau uh, film noir shots. <laughs> but I have to say the bird coming out like as I came out of my cartwheel was pretty amazing. Like that timing couldn't have been any better. No, I mean, it was very well. Uh, <laughs> I paid that bird. Well, listen, it's, he's SAG eligible. Now. <laughs> Seriously. They're very tough these days. Now, when you uh, I've always uh, wondered this about soaps. I, I'm sure the. There's someone in charge of watching other soaps, like, you know, spying on what other shows are doing. Was there ever pressure to, like, well, uh, I'm just starting out a name. Uh, General Hospital is being really sexy with their storylines. We have to match that. Or is it you just do your thing? And You know, I don't know. Um, it, there, there's, a, there's always a possibility that that is happening, but it's definitely not being told to right. me. <laughs> well, I mean. Uh, they should tell me. Right. I mean, because. I'm me. Well, of course. And yeah. Now, what's, I see you, uh, Beacon Hill, the series. Yes. Yes. That was a fun, that was, um, that's a, it's a soap esque, I guess, type thing. Right. Yeah. And that was a web series. It was a web series. Yes. Do you like doing, I mean, do you, what do you prefer? Like, uh, network shows, web series? I mean, what's the, what gives you the most creative freedom? Um, I think it, I mean, creative freedom is probably always going to be something indie because um, it's got a lower budget and usually the creators of it are the ones um, saying this is what we're doing. So they also usually are more flexible. But I mean, it's I'm always happy working, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, that's why I wanted yeah. to have you on the show. Because you're one of the few actual working actresses. I know. <laughs> Most of them are, uh, you know, not working. <laughs> it's tough to do. Now, I don't know if you're allowed to tell me this, but what's like the biggest role you've gone out for and didn't, and didn't get? get? Like movie, uh, other show. I mean, because uh, I could see you playing Jax's wife on Sons of Anarchy. You could have been that girl. Mm, see, I would have loved to have been Jax's wife. Oh, I bet. <laughs> um... Gosh, I don't know. I don't know. If I, I mean, I know you've done thousands of auditions. Yeah. Was there one that you really wanted? And because I've always been fascinated by. I really wanted Mad Men because I loved the show so much, but it wasn't a lead. It was just a, a I think like a, a one time. Right. Um, but that show I'm, I was ridiculously obsessed with. So, yeah, that one I really wanted. And there was one other one. Oh, I wanted to get on. Um, oh, no, I can't think of the name. The one. um Who's in it? I'll tell you the name. Silicon Valley. Oh, okay. That one. Um, and did you even audition for it? I think, or? Yeah, I think it was. I think it was the girl that like works for that company that gave him the money and stuff. Oh and wow! The guy died. That guy. Well, you but can it still get on it. <laughs> you can still get on it. I can still get on it. Um, now my eyes are set on Mr. Robot. Unless that's done, I don't know. I mean, I feel like it just came, so. Maybe, right. maybe I'll have to wait for the next season. <laughs> well, I uh, hopefully there's a next season. I mean, who knows? Is it all ratings based if a show? I don't know. I honestly don't. Because especially with stuff like, I mean, I guess this is actually USA. I'm just because I'm watching it online doesn't mean that's right. where it's only at. Don't tell them that. <laughs> but um, I, I, I think I want to say it's a ratings based thing for most things. Um but I don't know. I mean, it probably just has a lot more to do with the advertising dollars. And um, that's way above my head. Well, no, it's above <laughs> my head. Like I uh, <laughs> saw, was it Rob Schneider's TV show that came on after Big Bang? Oh, had yeah. good ratings. <clears throat> and they still canceled it. Yeah. You know, and then, but then he just said F it. And he's, he 
finance his own show on Netflix. Right. So, right. Um, Which I think, I mean, Netflix is definitely an awesome way to go right now. It's an awesome way. They've the, every show that comes out that they've been putting out has been so good. Yeah. There really isn't one show. There've been some I liked over others, Sure, uh, sure, sure. but there hasn't been one bad show. Like, you know, you turn on pretty much any network. So, oh boy, how, this is rough. <laughs> I'm just happy they're bringing back Prison Break. Maybe you could get on that. Ooh, that'd be fun. I could see you uh, maybe playing the love interest of uh, Lincoln Burroughs. Done. Dominic Purcell, good looking guy. Done. You don't have to twist my arm. <laughs> uh, did you ever watch that show? Um, I think I watched a couple of episodes of it years back, but... Well, it was so just completely insane, uh, the, the storyline and like, you know, the guy breaks into prison, frees his brother out, he tattoos the plans of his of the prison on his body and the bad guy's name was Teabag. I just thought that was, that's just like... Perfect. Because to me, when any show... That? When was that on? That was on from like, it was like, I think it was uh, four seasons. I think it was like 03 to maybe 08. Yeah. Okay. And... Yeah. uh do you have a favorite bad guy you've ever worked with? Mm, yeah, Roscoe Bourne. Um, he played Mitch Lawrence. I was actually married to him for about a minute. Um, In real life? No. Oh. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> what makes a good bad guy? Um, a good bad guy, I think, is just someone you want to watch. You know, it's it's like they're either. I mean, because there's so many. So many different types of bad guys. I mean, one of my other favorite bad guys was uh, Paul Telfer, who played Xander on Days. But the reason Mitch, um, sorry, Roscoe was such a influential one is, first of all, his character, I think, had been killed 16 times. Um, so and just kept bringing him back. Kept bringing him back. Um, and he played a cult leader. Um, so there was just that creep factor to it. Right. And... Um, and the brainwashing thing that you did. And then he just played crazy, really fucking great. And he had this side to him too, where he was just like super fun to work with, but you're also like, Fuck, don't piss him off. Right. You know what I mean? And, um, he was just, he was a lot of fun. In fact, um, some fan tweeted a picture earlier. He, um, calls himself Mitch Lawrence on Twitter and, um, he's been tweeting me, every once in a while with pictures and it's always pictures of when Mitch had me tied up or yeah. And so the one today was like Mitch biting my ear off, not off, but does that, I mean, like, I know you love your fans. I do. I do love my fans. But it's something like that. Uh, I mean, it's a little, it's a little, um, fetishy. (laughs) That's putting it very nicely. I would call it something else. Maybe fucking creepy. (laughs) Just kidding to that one fan who you probably listen to this. I'm guessing first. <laughs> I don't want to be involved. Like, <laughs> not creepy at all. No, I mean, it's interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. Dude, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to upset any, anyone on Twitter w- when you uh, tweet this out. Um, I mean, but you have to be... Uh, you know, careful these days, I guess, when you're as public as you are, you know, I mean, these days you got Google Earth, you got you know, Twitter, Facebook. Oh, yeah. uh, and then there's like geo tagging on like half your pictures and stuff now. And I, I mean, I don't know how easy it is to get that information off of it, but you stick it up online. But I would assume it's probably not that hard. I mean, luckily, we live in a pretty secure building. <laughs> right. I mean, I locked myself out once <laughs> and I could not get in this building. <laughs> I had to climb our gate, which is substantial. And then uh, there's a... Wait, I'm like, how did you even climb the gate? Isn't there a thing above it? I mean, I'm in, you know, fair. I'm not an Olympic athlete, but, you know, <laughs> I had to do what I had to do. Uh-huh. And uh, so I think you're safe. And this is like Fort Knox, our building. I would have loved to have seen that. It was tough. I mean... Oh, my God. That reminds me. <laughs> so one drunken night um, at the last place I lived... I'm not really sure what happened. I think I lost my keys or I thought I lost my keys. I'm not sure when. I've been there. (laughs) And I'm with my friend and I'm like, all right, well, we can't get in. So I somehow, I think, I I actually am not even sure how I was able to get up there, but I somehow got up onto my balcony by doing like insane (laughs) 
climbing moves. To well, you're in shape. <laughs> I mean, not that much. I don't scale walls often. So then I'm like hanging onto the balcony, which mind you, I don't know how safe it was. And I'm not great with pull-ups. So my lower body strength is way stronger. So I'm like, and I'm in a dress, mind you. So this isn't just like. It's just got interesting. (laughs) And so I'm (laughs) trying to get my legs up over the thing because I can't pull myself up. So I'm like throwing my leg as much as I can onto the balcony, onto the railing, and then wrapping my leg around it and pulling myself up that way, climbing over only because I happened to have remembered that I left that unlocked upstairs. Hey. Anyway, got in. It was great. We've all been there. <laughs> now, uh, getting, you, you know, talk about your fitness levels and uh, <laughs> was there uh, pressure from the networks to stay fit? Mm, always, sp- yeah. especially since you're playing a, a vixen of sorts yeah uh i mean do they do it subtly or they're like no. hey you're 10 pounds overweight yes. and not you but like no they're not subtle and and what do you say to that? Oh, okay i'll go to the gym tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> okay because <laughs> it's hard when you make your uh i mean you have the acting ability but you, you know i guess initially you're cast based on your just physical appearance is sure uh so is did that uh was there ever pressure uh self pressure from yourself to go i can't i can't oh, get yeah. another pound and, oh and, yeah yeah it's it's uh that's probably like the most stressful part of it sometimes because it's you can psych yourself out a lot um like even if you do all the right things you can psych yourself out and think that you're not looking great and being worried that they're not going to like how you look. And then sometimes you're like, you wake up and you're like, my God, who is that? Right. <laughs> Looking good today, Melissa. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a, it just depends on what your brain tells you that morning. <laughs> right. Is it just Isn't it uh, weird that my head sounds like that though? It's, not at all. <laughs> it's got the weirdest sounds to it. I mean, you're a hot babe. Uh, so my God, you know, and is, is it that way for the guys too? I mean, uh, like someone like Sean, you know, very good looking guy. I don't know if they have that same voice, like that same. I don't think they voice. do. <laughs> no, I have no idea. Um, I mean, like I would assume that a lot of those guys do probably have somewhat, but I feel like with women, we have more issue with body, like just image in general. Whereas men, I mean, they go to the gym, they do their thing and that's it. And then if they start to, I mean, and I know there've been guys that have been told that, yeah, Hey guy, you know, you need to shed a few. Um, and I'm sure it's probably as upsetting as it is. I don't want to dis, I don't want to take away from their, their pain. (laughs) So I'm sure it's just as upsetting, but I feel like for women it's, um, I don't know. I I just feel like that's something we've struck. We've all struggled with to some extent since we were teens, especially if you're an actress, because we're all a little bit crazy. Oh, 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 absolutely. (laughs) Known or unknown. Uh, I tell you, it's, I don't know if I'll ever uh, date another actress or comic again. (laughs) I don't blame you. I mean, I hate to hear what they say about me, but uh, it's. Uh, have you ever dated uh, An a, actor? before your husband? Uh, yeah, did you uh, date? I a- did. I dated one actor. Um, he was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. But is it tough? I imagine uh, you know I've dated not to get myself into the story, but yeah. uh, you know when you date a comic or, or you know it's uh, it's great, but then one maybe. Tri- Starts getting things the other doesn't. I mean, it was it uh, was he a well known? I, I don't want the name, but like oh no, uh uh-uh, uh, he wasn't. Uh, so was that like when you started to take off? Was was there? Um, it was one of those weird things because we were we had like we had the best time, like loved hanging out and stuff. Um, but when I got the show, it was kind of just an understood thing of like, all right, see ya type thing. I mean, we stayed in touch, but we right. just, it wasn't. And he was very supportive and oh okay, yeah, very sweet. And, now, do you still uh, talk to him? Uh, no, we lost touch somewhere in the middle of the 10 years that I was there. No, I got you. Yeah. And now your husband is not in the business at all. At all. Yeah. Do you fe- feel that that uh, is... Well, that's not totally true. He is, but not on the actor side. Right. The, behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, yeah. Um, do you like dating... Uh, or dating? Uh, I love dating my husband. Right. <laughs> um... But do you like dating a non-actor or married a non-actor? <laughs> I don't know why. Well, I've never been married to a 
anyone else. No, I'm kidding. Right. I mean, that's true. Um, Your husband's going to be uh, listening to this, hopefully going, who's she dating? Right. <laughs> Glenn, I mean to say married. I'm talking about you and you alone because your husband's a big guy. He's a big guy. He is a All big right. guy. Um, so sorry. What was the question? Again? I'm so nervous right now. I don't even know what the question was. No, I keep saying dating. Uh <laughs> I just snorted on your radio. I love it. Listen, <laughs> this, this is inappropriate, Earl. You can snort. You can swear. Uh, talk Thank about it, anything you want. I don't edit anything out. So I had a guest once say the N-word, and he's like, oh, you're going to edit that out, right? I'm like, no. No. <laughs> and it was not Hulk Hogan. He's, he's really gone off the deep end. Oh. Uh, the question was uh, 12 minutes ago. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, like you, uh, you dated an actor, mm-hmm. but do you like dating someone who's behind the uh, married to someone who's behind the scenes? Sorry, Glenn. I'm really, do you like being married to someone yes. who's by, yeah? Fuck. Let's get off it. So, what do you got going next? <laughs> oh my god! Not going to go down to the garage one day and see. We park right next to each other, and I remember the first day I met your husband. I was like, Jesus Christ, who's this <laughs> fucking monster? He's like a big guy. <laughs> and he was like lifting that whole uh, that? storage unit by himself. I'm like, do you need any help, man? He's like, no. I'm like, all right, I- there you go. That's a good answer. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to die right now. It's so funny. No, no, I love it. This it's is great. So I mean, funny. you um, know, uh, my whole goal is, you know, we go about half hour, 40 minutes, because I want the listeners and my fan base is a very limited span of attention. <laughs> um, I mean, when I have a pro wrestler on, they lose the train of thought very easily. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you, you know, what's next on the horizon for you? Um, well, we're really going to be pushing um, viral um, to see where we can get it to go because we want to do more episodes. Um, and... Uh, I'm I'm really excited about it. There's it just it's a it's a project that came together for a lot of really great reasons and um and it's funny. I'm just like <laughs> I keep talking. I'm like and it's funny. Well, you should but, feel that way. But it, it. but yeah, but it was like, you know, we did it for so little money, but we put together this awesome awesome little thing and and then to watch it because you don't know what that's going to be like you know you kind of go okay I'm doing this and then you watch it and you're just like oh god how's this going to be and then I watched it and I was like holy shit this is hilarious I'm actually I actually think this is funny um and I'm okay with showing people um so now I want to make it happen I want it to go somewhere so that's what I'm going to be focused on um but I'm also writing um uh got an, a writing partner that we're also working on trying to get our script turned into a film. So can, can you give us a little teaser drama comedy? It's uh it's sexual thriller. It is, it's a sexual thriller. No, it's not a sexual thriller. It is. <laughs> it's, but it is a thriller. It's, um, it's interesting. It's about, um, technology and how, uh, how what we do on our everyday basis with our phones and our Facebooks right. and all this other shit, like how it um, how it, it kind of affects all these people. So there's like five people or four people that um, be kind of there. I can't fucking pitch anything. Don't ask me to do it. No, <laughs> no, no. I would no, want you to pitch my idea. No, I, <laughs> I mean, I'll, and then, and then, and then. five minutes in, you'd be like, what the fuck is she pitching? <laughs> exactly. But anyway, the point of it is, is that it's like all these people get intertwined together right. uh, by doing all these things. And a lot of it comes from them looking for a connection that was instead of right in front of them, they just go to their technology. on their phone. Yeah. Uh, and some crazy shit happens, which is why that part's a thriller. <laughs> you sold me. Because that sounds like I'm the kind of target I audience. It, I, I say it like it's such a lame. I'm like, you know, some shit happens and some people, you know, die. Bah, it's good. If you walked into Spike TV with that exact sales pitch, they'd, I probably get it, they'd right? put it on. They'd be I like, mean, done. I'm obsessed with that network. They yeah, put, it's pretty awesome. Like bar rescue on for like these eight hour blocks, and it's like yeah. You ever watch that show? No. That's oh, fascinating. <laughs> I'm I really like bad TV, so like bar gotcha. rescue, uh, any reality show I'm obsessed with. Oh, I don't like reality shows. Were you ever tempted to uh, go on one? I mean, you know, I see sometimes I see 
actors like oh this is like a show like big brother which is on cbs yeah no i've i've never wanted to per se i mean look if i don't i mean i'm never gonna say never to anything but um, right. it's definitely not like up my woo this is what i want to do <laughs> what do you find um for a lot of reasons too because i think that i would get embarrassed really quickly because either a i'd be worried that everyone thinks that's how I really am or B, I really am like that. And everybody's going to see right. like that. <laughs> right. So yeah, that's that. Do you find it easier to pitch things? I mean, it seems like, but with, uh, no, well, not, not after that I, pitch I, I just heard. <laughs> I, know, I was going to say, I don't usually do the talking on it because I'm terrible at it. But I mean like a, a serious, like workaholics, yeah. uh, was, uh, I think a YouTube sketch and yeah. then it, it's, like with all, you know, nowadays it seems to make your own pilot for any idea. It's you need a nice camera. Well, I think that's the thing that's kind of interesting that's happened. Like no one really wants to see scripts anymore. They want go make it, go make it. We want to see right. it. I don't have time to read it. They want a little, um, I like guess sizzle of it and then or trailer or something just so that they can decide, you know, Oh yeah, that looks, that concept's good. Great. Okay. We'll move on or no. And then they're right. done. Yeah. I mean, that's in some ways I like it like that. And so, like, you know, with the podcast, right. anyone can do a podcast, which is great. You Not know, anyone can keep it going. Absolutely. This is episode 81. Wow. And we've had, you know, some great guests, you know, David Arquette, you know, that's awesome. Oh, he was awesome. And uh, a couple of pro wrestlers and, uh, you know, but in some ways it's bad that everyone can do one because you don't have to be really that good. To... <laughs> I mean, really, all you need for a podcast is a recorder and two microphones. Right. Anyone could do that. I'm so, going to start one and compete with you. Well, you have like a bazillion followers on uh, Twitter. So hopefully I leech off a few of them. <laughs> You're going to be getting a tweet from me in about an hour with this show, so... I can't wait. Well, no, it's it was... I know you're very busy, and I know that you've been on big talk shows, and, uh, you know, it's almost embarrassing for me to ask someone like you, hey, will you do my podcast? Stop it. I was excited. But it's true, though. It's like, I'm sure, you know, you were nice enough to do it. Some celebrities... Uh, Dude, you got David Arquette on here. I got David Arquette. <laughs> I, mean, I got uh, a couple uh, big uh, 80s band members, which I, uh, you know, I'm a child of the 80s, so to get the singer from Rat to sit right where you're sitting... Although he was chewing gum the whole time. Oh, no. People are like, Earl, what? Did, What's what? that sound? And I'm like, how do you tell your favorite singer of all time? Hey, man, can you spit your gum out? So he was like, yeah, Earl, I love being on this show. <laughs> Steven, tell us about uh, what went into writing Lay It Down. Well, <laughs> we were in the studio. So you were awesome. Melissa Archer, this is the part of the show. Not that you need my help in plugging things. Where can people find you on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all that good stuff. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at underscore Melissa Archer and on Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash the Melissa Archer. And that's a fan page on Facebook. It is. Yes. And so all you soap and please be respectful. My fans are a little, like I say, they like pro wrestling in 80s. I love metal. it. But just be respectful. This is my neighbor. This isn't some floozy I met at the Rainbow <laughs> with Ron Jeremy. Uh, <laughs> at half. It, it, by the way, I saw him last night. Did you? At the comedy is store. Is he still looking uh, a little hefty? Um, is, uh, He fell asleep in the middle of the show. Oh, God. But I'm obsessed with Ron Jeremy. I don't watch porn. Really? You know, it's not my thing. I know it looks like I produce it, but uh, it's just um, I'm trying to be respectful to my neighbor. Oh, you don't have to be respectful. Well, I do when your husband's about six oh, five. Okay, okay, uh, fair enough, fair enough. It's um, you know 2015, like we were just talking about. There's a lot. Of, the technology is amazing. Blu-ray, high def, 3D, plasma screens, curved screens. I mean, sure. my TV's 75 inch high. You know, you can't get any nicer. I don't want to watch a porn on that stuff. Right. I hear you. I mean, the guy's balls look like the moon. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to clean this up as best I can. You are incredibly beautiful. Thanks. Any woman to me is beautiful. 
all shapes and sizes, short, tall, fat, skinny, in between. But um, certain body parts of a, a lady after 10 minutes with Ron Jeremy or Lexington Steel, <laughs> I don't need to see that in digital clarity. Oh my God. <laughs> Looks like that thing uh, Boba Fett fell into. Oh my God. <laughs> That's the Sarlacc pit. For you, uh, Return of the Jedi uh, fans. <laughs> so that's why I don't. Oh uh, but I love Ron Jeremy. To me, he's like so iconic. Uh, I almost don't even think of him as a. It's just Ron Jeremy, you know? right? He's not. Does he still like have the ponytail and stuff? He's got the ponytail. He's you know he's incredibly nice. And his history of uh, of L A. You know, uh, just he's been there and done everything. Right, right. Uh, but. Uh, I said, hey, man, Mr. Jeremy, I, and this is a reaction I get from celebrities a lot. Uh. They, you know, I'd love to have you on the podcast. And he looks at me and goes, what's a podcast? I'm like, probably not going to be a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so Melissa Archer, please follow her Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Remember, go underscore Melissa Archer, because I'm sure there's another Melissa Archer out there who, when you idiots uh, tweet at her, you know, who the fuck are you people <laughs> uh this has been a very special edition of inappropriate Earl, episode 81 uh and please become fans of melissa she's awesome and don't tweet anything inappropriate or just just have some class for once in your lives uh inappropriate Earl, itunes and soundcloud leave a review on itunes it helps get the numbers up you fools i've been asking you this for 80 fucking episodes i, I leave them all up bad or good and uh, tweet it out you want better guests like Melissa? You got We got to get some ground uh, movement here, grassroots, and we will be back next week with this is bad breaking news. I just got a text. Breaking news: Mr. Belding from Saved by the Bell. Awesome. Dennis Haskins, one of the great uh, comic uh, TV actors of the last twenty years. He's coming on. We'll talk about Saved by the Bell and who was doing who on that set, which uh, I'm sure was. Everybody, except for Screech. Uh, <laughs> guys, thank you very much. We'll see you soon. Yeah.